It's the local show on News Radio 570 WSYR, a service of Geddes Federal Savings and Loan and Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts. The local show featuring conversations with business owners, employees, and local business leaders about their successes, challenges, and reasons for doing business right here in Central New York. The local show is locally produced by Zoe Advertising. Now, your hosts. Tom and Steve. Welcome in. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2023 winter edition of The Local Show. I'm your host, Tom Sakosho Jr., along with my friend and co-host, Steve Roberts. The Local Show features conversations with local businesses, with uh, business owners, CEOs, CFOs, entrepreneurs, nonprofits, business advocates, and other business-friendly organizations. We talk about how they got into business and why they do business right here in Syracuse, New York, and where their businesses might be going in the future. Now, you will hear all about their successes, their challenges, opportunities, marketing, and advertising. And we broadcast from the Zoe Advertising Studios, sponsored by Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts, and get us federal savings and loan. Good weekend to Steve Roberts. How are you there as the uh, new year is ticking on? I'm good for being me, Tom. Yes. (laughs) How's that? That's good. Yes, That's you know, good, have, to, good to have you along. Have you? Uh, you're not a New Year's resolution guy, right? No, not at all. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm not. There's, there. It feels like there should be something different there, but it, it's so artificial. Yeah, you know, I heard, a, I heard some folks talking that. Uh, the worst month to work out in the gym is January. Oh, because sure. Because all these yeah, people are like, oh, I'm going to, you know, so all the gyms have all these people that like don't know how to use the equipment. They're <laughs> like clunky in the way, yeah. you know, and they're going to, they're going to get fed. And then uh, by, by the second week of February, crickets, they're right. gone. And you can, they get back to the routine. It's funny. I never thought about that. Well, you used to be a regular workout guy. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I tried. And <laughs> Nicholas, well, you did it. You Nick, were, you well, were, for years and yeah, years. Yeah, you were but, big time. But more recently, Nicholas and I tried to get in there, but uh, with the COVID and the masks, uh, which I thought was so ridiculous, I was on that elliptical with a mask on. And, <laughs> and, and you know, and I got a sinus problem Let's to begin with. Half your, bre- half your <laughs> oxygen <laughs> right off the bat. <laughs> and, and it sounded like, you know, a wheezy peasy over there it was ridiculous so then i stopped going but you know uh, then people started getting on these pelotons and the mirrors and all these other things in and, and nobody you know it's been my experience in all the years that i was you know uh, kind of what do you call it? Uh, connected Heavily to heavily engaged in to, that, yeah, yeah. In, in fitness. Uh, it's been my experience that anybody who puts anything in their home never does it. It becomes yeah, yeah, yeah. it becomes a towel rack. Yeah. <laughs> what is that under the bed? You really need that social engagement, and that gives you kind of uh, inspiration as well. So there you go, there you go, Jim's. I gave you a little yeah. bump <laughs> for, for all that it's worth. <laughs> hey, stick around. We've got a great show lined up for you. We're going to talk with Dr. Warren Hilton. He is the president of Onondaga Community College. And then we're going to talk with attorney David Snyder. He's the owner of the Snyder Law Firm. Natasha Schmidt stops by, co-owner of Rubberstone, New York. Attorney John Murphy, owner of Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts. Is he going to have anybody with him? I did, think Marie's find, coming. Oh, okay. Good. I think Marie's coming. So uh, we'll get her yeah. right hand gal. Yes. She, right. yes. Good. And then uh, Chris and Andrea DeVita is the owner of Salt City Bread and then Doug Lalone the owner of the Preserve at 405 Restaurant will be here as well, all on the local show today. Now we say a hearty, healthy good morning to Dr. Warren Hilton, president of Onondaga Community College. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me here, Steve and Tom. Great. Well, it's good to have you. Uh, Last time we spoke, we were letting people know that you were the uh, new president. Uh, I I can't remember how long you've been there. So why don't you give people a little background and how long you've been up there? Sure, sure, sure. So I I came to OCC, uh, began in July of uh, last year. Uh, So I've been there uh, a little over six months now, enjoying the experience. And it's a wonderful institution, and it aligns with my belief that education is one of the most powerful ways for individuals to thrive and for communities to be uplifted. So, How did you end up finding OCC? What's your journey? I think, uh, you know, a little bit of me finding OCC and OCC finding me. Um, You know, my journey in higher education uh, has always been one of looking at how uh, I can help individuals achieve their goals, Um, whether they wanted to get an associate's degree and go right into the workforce, 
or whether they wanted to get a four-year degree, it didn't matter. Uh, I'm just passionate about helping people through higher education. Uh, and that's what OCC is all about, right? It's, a, it's the community's college. It's at the intersection of so many people's lives in central New York. Um, with Spirit Wednesday, so I have my OCC gear on. Um, on <laughs> campus, we have Spirit Wednesday, but I actually wear OCC gear probably seven days a week. And when I'm out in the community and I meet people and they find out I'm connected to OCC, they often tell me that either they're connected to OCC in some type of way, they took a class, they got a degree, they found their spouse there, or you know somebody in their family is connected to OCC. So it is really at the heart of uh, our community here in central New York. And uh, those are the types of institutions that I love to be associated with. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So uh, uh, in the heart of the city, uh, spent- uh, West Philadelphia, born and raised? I, no, no, not West, no. Northwest Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a rich aunt and uncle in California when I got in trouble. <laughs> you were playing uh, basketball with Will Smith. Then, no, you know? okay. no, no, even though uh, Will Smith and I are around the same age. Oh, no, uh, You know, it, it, Philadelphia is a great city. And, yeah. and I, I often uh, think of Philadelphia as a, a larger version of Syracuse. Many of the same things I see in the city here at Syracuse are things that I saw in Philadelphia, you know, 20, right. 25 years ago. So, so it's a wonderful, you know, it makes me feel like, you know, I'm right at home here in Syracuse. So, yeah. I had a wedding reception uh, last week and the couple is from Philadelphia. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. And uh, they had just a, a wonderful time. And they, and they were saying how it was very similar to, to Syracuse. Ah, similar. So you guys are both, I'm like, yeah. Philly and Syracuse. How would they say I, I don't know. But I, I, I tell you, you know, I like that. Huh? Philadelphia is just bigger. Yeah, it's bigger. Course, yeah, uh, but a lot of the same challenges uh, and a lot of the same opportunities. Um, great food, uh, great history, and sure. uh, both cities are connected. You know, if you think about the Syracuse Nationals, they became the Philadelphia 76ers. Right. Yeah. I, I can't that. tell you how many athletes from Philadelphia ended up at SU, no uh, including Marvin Harrison. Oh, really? Uh, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. You know, so just so you know, yeah. lots of connections between Philadelphia and uh, sure. Syracuse. So yeah. How was your? You had your first Christmas here, probably, right? Yes, yeah. we did. No, uh, it was how wonderful. Was it was wonderful. I mean, you got you. You all told me there were going to be so much yes. snow oh, here. Yeah. I know. And, uh, you got lucky. This we, is a, we, a we, we have been, this is amazing. I, it really I know. Is a light Trust year. me, I know. I, I know someone that owns a plowing company, and I was speaking with the other day, and I said, "Well, oh, so," and they go by contract by year. I yes. Guess. Yeah. I yes, go, yes, yes, yes. Hey, I think this got to be pretty good because you know you sure. take the good with the bad when you, when you do that. But uh, how about I, that? I had a question for you as far as the SRC arena. Yeah. My my son is into photography and videography, so he'll take pictures for the high school teams. And uh, I just took him up to SRC and walked around the SRC a little bit. What a yeah. wonderful facility. I mean, it's just so great to have that up there with the Y. Absolutely. What's yep. the affiliation, though, to uh, OCC? What's the connection? Well, of SRC? So, yeah. Um, um, I guess we've uh, the, it's been named SRC for about ten years now, right, a little sure. over ten years. Yeah. And uh, uh, back then, SRC, uh, you know, was generous enough to give the institution a generous donation. Right, uh, gotcha. And uh, it became the SRC Arena. It is beautiful. Uh, and so that's you know, part of OCC. It's not like SRC doesn't own it. No, you SRC own doesn't it. own it. It's, gotcha. it's a part of OCC. And like yeah. you said, we have the YMCA there. Yeah. You know, side yeah. note. Uh, the uh, CEO of the Central New York YMCA is a Philadelphia guy as well. <laughs> there you uh, go. So I didn't know that. I went to high school with him, and uh, yeah. his name is Bertram Lawson. We and, ought to have uh, him on the air. You yeah. should. Yeah, you should. Yeah, should. He's a wonderful him, individual. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, you yep. know, so we we host a number of athletic events. Just last night, we were there uh, hosting the Scholastic Arts uh, oh, event. Oh, yeah, uh, awesome. And if you haven't been by uh, campus, you can stop on by the Whitney Applied uh, Technical Center. Um, and all the artwork that the young people from Central New York is still up in, it'll be up till uh, March 3rd. So Very nice. we hope folks will stop by and see it. Would you mind sticking around because we wanna continue to talk to you. We're, yeah, just, we're just starting to unpack things. Okay. Yes. Good, all right, on the local show, we've got uh, Dr. Warren Hilton. He is the president of Onondaga Community College and we'll continue our conversation with him uh, right here on the local show on 570 WSYR 106.9 FM and on YouTube at Zoe Ad Advertising. Stick around. 
Welcome back to The Local Show, a service of Geddes Federal Savings and Loan and Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts. The Local Show, featuring conversations with business owners, employees, and local business leaders about their successes, challenges, and reasons for doing business right here in Central New York. The Local Show, locally produced by Zoe Advertising. Now, here are your hosts, Tom and Steve. We're back again, and thank you for joining us and carving out a little time on the weekend to spend with Tom and Steve right here at Zoe Advertising. You are listening to The Local Show, and we've been having a conversation with Dr. Warren Hilton. He is the president of Onondaga Community College, a true gem of uh, educational excellence right here in our community. The place has changed a little bit, hasn't it, Tom? It has. Well, uh, and, and you know what, what I found changed the most was that they actually have these little plaques when we went up to visit right we got the tour and it's got placards of people who've accomplished things all through you know uh, the different classes did you see my placard and no and I noticed that I I didn't have one either yeah just saying and I'd like to talk to the good doctor about that I I don't know I'm just just saying there's a committee that makes those decisions we'll we'll put you we'll put you on the list yes indeed so so if we do it here's what it is we're on one Tom. It's Tom and Steve, and right. we're on one. Yeah, we'll, we'll even no, take we'll, off just one. We'll, we'll give you your, each your own if, if, if the committee decides. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. we're not going to. I've had some good accomplishments. I was just shocked. I agree. I mean, that's our alumni faces. Uh, it's all over campus, and it features a number of alumni who've yes. gone on to do wonderful things in the community. Yeah, um, and they know, might still consider yeah. us, Tom. Yeah. Right? Uh, hey, you know what? We'll put you on the list for consideration. We yeah. Go. Well, we did take a tour. Uh, doctor, um, and uh, who do who do we have take us? What was his name there? Nice guy. Uh, <laughs> probably were you with Roger? Yeah, Roger. Uh, yes, 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 Marabito. Yes, yes. Marabito. Yeah, that's yes, right. Yes, yes, yes. I knew him from uh, Channel Nine. That's he right. Had worked at Channel Nine yep, for a while, yep. and uh, what a great guy! And he was showing us uh, all around, and I was really, really impressed. I, I you know, I'm not just saying yeah. that. How about the communications department? Tom? Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's changed, you and I both ran yeah. through those halls in the early '80s. Absolutely. Whoa! I got to tell you, that's such a fabulous program. When we were yeah. at the TBT last summer. Uh, What's all of TBT? the people, T- I'm sorry, the basketball tournament okay, uh, gotcha. that features <laughs> Bayheim's Army. Uh, wonderful event. Uh, and all of the broadcast folks behind the scenes that mm-hmm. brought, that was broadcasted on ESPN. Nice. All of them were OCC yeah. grads. How about wow. That? It was yeah, amazing, you know. Yeah. And then when I talked to a lot of them, they said, Well, Dr. Hilton, you know, we love doing this work. And, and I said, But we won't see you tomorrow because we got to go to the um, National uh, Baseball. Um, Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. because that was the next day. So they worked nice. TBT. Mm-hmm. Then they went and worked out there in uh, uh, Cooperstown. So wild. yeah, I mean, our our grads are doing some wonderful things from that program. Sure. And if you're impressed with OCC the way it looks now, mm-hmm. um, you know, give us a little time. There's a lot of work that'll be going on over the next uh, few years. Uh, Senator Schumer. Uh, was in town two weeks ago Mm -hmm. uh, and brought a a number of institutions, uh, some big checks, if you will, and we were one of them. We got $2 million uh, for our our state of what is gonna be a state of the art uh, healthcare center, training center. So our healthcare students will be learning in an environment that looks exactly like a healthcare environment, so a hospital. So. We're very thankful for that. We're thankful for the contributions and the commitment from the Onondaga County legislator who've approved some funding for us uh, for this uh, project and other projects. And then, of course, you know, uh, Micron's coming to town. And (laughs) and so we we got some additional funding there and we're gonna be building a clean room on our campus over the next couple of years. Who cleans Uh, that? Well, it's a complicated <laughs> system you know, that I don't weird. understand yeah. everything. I'm just but, curious. Uh, you know, they got to yeah. clean it. Right I tell you what, it's so clean. Uh, I went into a clean room back in December down in, in, in Virginia uh, mm-hmm. at one of uh, Micron's educational partners down there. And you, it's, it's so clean, you got to put on a suit. Right. Um, because you can't contaminate the environment. But it's there's a lot something. of equipment that keeps it clean. So we're going to have a clean room on our campus, and then uh, this coming summer we're we're going to be doing some things like chip camp with young people. Uh, we'll be wrapping up building the curriculum that will lead to those jobs over at Micron. So we're very, 
very yeah. excited yeah. about the campus so and, if and how it's going to be uh, or a, a reinvigorated. Parent, a parent or a grandparent are listening and, and their child is trying to say, I'm not sure what I want to do. I'm yeah. not, you know, yeah, I want to yeah. go to the school and, and, and oh yeah, it's going to, it's going to put me a hundred thousand dollars in debt, but I want to go anyway right. well, it, it, to that heart. How, how do you communicate to them yeah. the, the experience, the value and the, and the, and what is going on up at OCC and why that should be yeah. really on the list. Yeah. So, you know, I would communicate the same way I would communicate to my own family member. You know, the value that we provide at OCC is tremendous. Um, it's the most affordable educational, higher educational op option that you have. And our programs are high quality. We have some of the best faculty around. Uh, we have programs that lead you right into a career, like our auto tech programs. So, oh, that was fantastic, okay. by yeah. the way. That facility. The facility is, is wonderful. Incredible. Yeah. You can you can get a certificate or an associate's degree <clears throat> and you move right into the field. Or if you wanted to go into something uh, in the liberal arts, like creative writing or something like that, you can get an associate's degree with us and then move on. Uh, to another institution like so, so, uh, SUNY Oswego, who we have partnerships with, um, or you, you know, uh, we have educators. Uh, you know, so just about anything that you want to do, um, you can figure out how to do it at OCC for an affordable price. And if you want that campus life experience, we have 16 varsity athletics teams. We just started a new esports team and. We're opening up an esports arena uh, nice. here in the spring semester. That's going to be wonderful. You all should come back and see that. Yeah, I'd like to see um, that. And then we have residence halls on our campus. So a lot of times students say, well, I don't want to go to a community college because I want a campus experience. experience yeah. Well, you get that at OCC. Would, would Tom yeah. and I still have eligibility to play sports, RC sports, if we were to come back and take Well, as long as you didn't play when you were, you were in college. <laughs> with, you know. And we actually have a wonderful story of uh, a, a young man who I believe is in his uh, 40s who is actually on our track team. There we go. Yeah, came I, back to school. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Came back to school and oh, that's fantastic. Uh, what a wonderful opportunity and is on our track team. So yeah, there's there's it's wonderful really opportunities out there at, at OCC uh, for campus life. So yeah, so it's a lot of amazing things going on. A lot of partnerships. Uh, this is the first semester that we'll have Amazon employees on our campus who are part of Amazon's Career Choice. Oh, if you okay. don't know about that program. No, I don't know that. OCC yeah. was selected to be an educational <clears throat> partner. Amazon employees, they get their education at OCC paid for by Amazon up front. Very nice. I did not know that. Up, up front. front. Their tuition is paid up front as long as you have work for Amazon. Is that okay with you? For 90 they days. they pay up front? Uh, so we're doing some really wonderful things. Uh, you know, our, our new student enrollment is, is looking uh, really good for uh, the spring semester. We're up about 86 students at this time. Oh, good. Compared good. to last year for new students. Uh, yeah. And we're doing a lot of other things on campus that um, building new programs. We'll be launching our cannabis education program on Monday. Don't we'll most students a, understand that pretty much? Uh, <laughs> I think the, you know, the world will understand it. Uh, and we're doing it in a way, um, we're doing it in a way where anybody can take advantage of it. So it's online, it's asynchronous, it's high quality. We're partnering with the Cleveland School of Cannabis. Uh, they have partnerships with employers. Um, this training is the same training that the uh, Florida Health Department has their uh, workers who work in that industry take. Um, there's a number of large uh, businesses that send their employers to this So training. is it too so, late to get on for the spring semester? No, it is not. Spring semester starts in two weeks. So they can jump on at yep. sunyocc.edu? That's it. Jump and on there. And if they yep. want to just talk to someone, can they do that? They call Absolutely. We, we have folks waiting to talk to folks, if you go on our website, we have a chat feature. If you're the type of person who wants to do that, um, if you want to email us, uh, we're we're there, um, and we're Excellent. we're excited to serve people. Super. Boy, there's a lot going on up there. Very Absolutely. good. Good job uh, so far. You're, you're talking you're, to me? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the tip of the iceberg. I think you're doing a good job, no, Steve. Thank yes. you. Somebody appreciate guy's it. guy's only been here a little over six months. He's got all sorts of stuff yeah, going on. We're trying. Are turning, we're man. trying. Good job. All right. Dr. Warren Hilton right there, president of Onondaga Community College, SUNYOCC.edu. You have a great rest of the day. Okay, doctor? Thank you, and thanks for having me. You got it. We'll have you back. All right. Coming up next, we're going to talk with attorney david snyder he's the owner of snyder law firm stick around for him on the local show on 570 wsyr 
Welcome back to The Local Show, a service of Geddes Federal Savings and Loan and Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts. The Local Show, featuring conversations with business owners, employees, and local business leaders about their successes, challenges, and reasons for doing business right here in central New York. The Local Show, locally produced by Zoe Advertising. Now, here are your hosts, Tom and Steve. Hey, thank you for joining us right here on The Local Show on 570 WSYR 1069 FM. And of course, YouTube fired up and ready to rock. You know what the big thing on YouTube is now, Steve? I, I don't know, but I think I'm going to. Yes. YouTube shorts. You see, uh, now you got to do the little. Like the shorts you and I wore in the 70s? Or no. Or do short, those shorts? No, but that would make a good short to show you in shorts. <laughs> but the, the little short things that uh, come up on people's timelines. So you do 60 seconds, oh, I saw 30 that. seconds. Okay, so yeah. this is, is this to compete with TikTok? Is that the idea? That was the idea, I think, with uh, YouTube doing well, that. Well, how do you, do you yeah. post a short? Do I say this is a short? No, or is, no, you just post something, you know, silly. That's, so post you know. a video. <laughs> Right, like you would give a, 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 for us, maybe we talk about a marketing minute. You know, one of the easiest ways to do blah, blah, okay. blah is to do this. I've been watching them with golf things. I see And them. golf, yeah, right. Because like I, a swing so I've been a, seeing those things, yeah. but I didn't know they had a category. <clears throat> yeah, and and that's the like the quickest way, they say, to build audience on YouTube and all that. So we'll have to get, um, you know, Brad in there to do some shorts. Let's do it. Chop up little short things. I like it. Little tips like, you know, chew your food before you swallow it. Stuff like that. What could happen? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, you can find us on uh, YouTube uh, under Zoe Advertising, obviously. Look up Zoe yeah. Advertising and you can see the uh, show. Like and there. subscribe and all that <clears throat> stuff. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, right now, it's our pleasure to bring back somebody that uh, I think uh, the last time we spoke to this uh, young man, it was like middle of COVID or yeah, something. Yeah, we were on like lockdown. That. Yeah. <laughs> something like that. Uh, attorney David Snyder, he's the owner of Snyder Law Firm. How are you, Dave? Very good. Thank you so much for it's, having me here. Well, it's good to have you. Tell us a little. Are you a Syracuse native? I am not. <clears throat> no. I'm uh, originally Leave from right now. Yeah. <laughs> you are <laughs> out of here. Can't be on the show. When, when it's freezing cold, I, I, I regret it a little bit. I'm from Arizona originally. Oh, wow. So. All right. Yeah. Arizona. Phoenix? Uh, I grew up in Tucson and went to high school in Phoenix and then back to college at the University of Arizona. Wow. So okay, little really known fact, Tom. Yes. I was born at born again. Hospital of the Good Samaritan in Phoenix. Oh, wow. That's uh, my, my, my cousins were uh, almost all born there. Yeah. Three, three of them were born there. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And, the third, and the fourth one is in long labor. They're still waiting. Yeah, it's still, still, <laughs> still waiting. <laughs> one of these days. <laughs> what What do we have to do to get uh, Arizona to take him back? Uh, you know, that's uh, they're they're, 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 they're open though. They'll, they'll take anyone. So <laughs> yeah, you walk right across the border. It's real easy. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Sorry. Yeah, that's funny. So where did you end up going to law school? Uh, I came to Syracuse. Oh, okay. there we yeah. go. So yes, um, yeah. I was I, I I had applied to a bunch of different schools, and yeah. uh, you know I. I had been accepted to a couple schools when I finally got a brochure for Syracuse. Uh -huh. I saw it and I hadn't been on my radar really. Yeah. And uh, I, I looked at the brochure and said, wow, this looks really nice. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know, I was familiar with the basketball team. I was a big college basketball fan, yeah. University of Arizona Wildcats. Sure, sure. And uh, so I, I was like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll apply. And um, they accepted me within a week. It was, it was a very fast turnaround. And then the next day I got a scholarship offer. Oh, so man, after, after that, I, I, everyone else who was coming in, I said, well, are you offering me anything? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's a, that's a great yeah. question. Yeah. yeah, did you have, uh, was Dean Braveman up there when he, you were Dean there? Dean Braveman was up there, yeah. Okay. The great, the great Dean Braveman. My so. mother was the admin there for all the, all through the 80s when I went to uh, up to SU. Yeah. You know, the, kind of uh, de the Dean was, you know, instrumental to, to expanding the school, and yeah. you know, he, did, he did a great job, and, you know, we were very lucky to have him. Wonderful. So, so why law? You know, I, I thought I was going to be a doctor, you know, originally. I, I was pre-med. Really? And yeah, I, I, I have a biology uh, degree and, you know. I, You're like smart. So, I you know, I thought like, <laughs> I thought that I, I thought that was the direction I was yeah. going. And, you know, I think, you know, you, you, you take, you go further along in those classes. You realized and, you didn't care about people or what well, happened? Well, no, I, 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 I love people, but I, I can't sit there and study for, you know, uh, oh, okay. organic chemistry. That, that, that was, that, that, oh, yeah. that's the separator, you know. And, okay. You know, I, I, I was good at biochemistry. I mean, classes that were harder than that, but, uh, but know, still yeah. a law you have to, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a little different though. I mean, I, you know, I think that, uh, the, the discipline for just memorizing things is different in law. You okay. know? So, I mean, that, that, that is a misconception, you know, you were talking about uh, that earlier, right. yeah. you know, lawyers don't, I mean, know 
everything in the law. There's right. you know, millions of pages of law out there. Sure. And uh, you can't, you know, you can't possibly know that. And you have to be willing to learn that, you know, and that's it's So a you honed down into a niche. Tell us about that. Well, uh, you know, I, I I thought I was going to do it several different careers throughout my uh, my <laughs> throughout my yeah. uh, my career. Yeah. Um, you know, I thought I was going to be a, a you know a uh, environmental lawyer. You know, with biology right. background, and uh, and then I went into uh, medical malpractice. Oh yeah, well uh, that's you know so, related. Yeah, and uh, so I, I still do that a little bit, uh, but uh, workers comp uh, workers compensation is. And personal injury is where I ended up, uh, you know, uh, practicing mostly. So. so why do personal injury attorneys and malpractice attorneys get a bad rap? You know, what, what's the deal with did that? They, did they earn it? You know, I, <laughs> I, I certainly don't think uh, all of them earned it. You know, I, I think there's a, a huge negative uh, connotation to attorneys who are advertising um, on, you know, everywhere. You see the, you know, there's yeah. the billboards sure. up. That and might I, not be fair, right? Yeah, and I, exactly. I, you know, I, I think there's, you know, I mean, there's different ways of handling that. And, you know, I, I think that there is a, uh, um, a certain amount of, um, you know, jealousy amongst, you know, different people right. over, over overseeing, you know, people's success and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. And, you know, there's, you know, but maybe it's the way they approach it, yeah. you know, the whole hammering and yeah. smashing and correct. We'll crush you. That's right. That's right. You know, and <laughs> I, I think there, there's the tort reform lobby has really pushed to make it seem that lawyers are driving up the cost of health care and things like that. Oh, I and, see. And, and really, that's that's not the case. Um, you know, the, the cost of medical malpractice lawsuits is, you know, it's less than, it's certainly less than 2% of, of total health care, might be less than 1%. Uh, but uh, the, um, that amount, you know, is actually improving health care. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that that's really the way I, I view, right. with, view yeah, that kind of and thing. And with all so. the people in the personal injury space, why do people do business with you? Well, I, you know, we are uh, available and, and, and we actually meet with our clients. You know, there's a lot of uh, attorneys who never, never meet with their clients. So maybe they're so you big, know. they have a process sign here, I see. maybe yeah. a paralegal, yeah. do this, we'll do it. Yeah. Don't call us, we'll call you. Yeah, yeah and, exactly. and I don't know any of them, but it, yeah. Yeah. is no, that that's fair? Right. That's right. Yeah. So or you're dealing different? with a paralegal only, you know. So. Okay. So right. someone calls you, what happens? Uh, you're going to, well, you'll, you'll talk to a secretary uh, initially, and then sure. you, uh, as soon as they realize that uh, it's uh, a case that we can handle, they're, you're talking to an attorney. So uh, there's good. three of us now, and uh, hopefully four soon. Wow, And good. Uh, yeah, that, that's, uh, you know, we, we really don't have uh, paralegals who are interrupting, especially mm -hmm. in, you know, the intake process. Um, and So uh, it's right yeah. to an attorney, so there's less layers? There's less layers. Yeah, that's right. And and are, are you? Do you have a little more integrity than most? I mean, do you well, push the integrity part of it? I mean, I like to believe I do. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not a guy. You know, who's. Uh, doing things at the expense of my client. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I try mm -hmm. to be as efficient as possible. And, uh, you know, there's some people who, you know, are not as conscientious about uh, the kinds of uh, expenses that they take on for their clients. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I just don't take that, that view. I, do, you, I want. do you vet people? In other words, if, if somebody came to you and said, geez, you know, um, I want to sue this person. And do, do you go through the whole vetting process? Would you, would, would you take somebody who was a little unscrupulous? Or? Uh, no, you know, we, I, I probably turned down more cases than I, well, I certainly turned down more uh, cases than I accept with uh, respect to personal injury yeah. cases. Yeah. Uh, workers comp isn't quite like that, yeah. but uh, you know, um, there are certainly a lot of people out there who are trying to uh, use the system or take advantage sure. of the system in some way. And you know, you can, you can, tell you know right. pretty quickly who's who's yeah. who so if it's workman's comp which uh um my workers my, per comp, yeah. my perception is if you don't use an attorney you, you need to use an attorney for yeah. that workman's comp or personal injury is the four five one thirty forty number the right number that's that's the right number so if they wanted to just ask a question or have a conversation um, they can do that, right? At any they, time. Don't charge for that. No, we do not. Okay, four five one three zero four zero. And the the email the, the website is feels a little cryptic here. S N Y D E R I F. Uh, that's L F. L as in law, yeah. law firm abbreviated. Look right. at that. We're yes. abbreviating. So that's an L time. So, yes, that's Snyder. not an I. L, so so right. Snyder Law uh, firm. You got it. You got All it. right. 
Very nice. Attorney David Snyder right there, owner of the Snyder Law Firm. Give them a call and just have a conversation and uh, see all that they do. Thank you, sir, for uh, being here. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. You have a good rest of the day. You too. Next up, we're going to talk with Natasha Schmidt. She's the co-owner of Rubberstone New York. Stick around for that conversation right here on The Local Show on 570 WSYR. Welcome back to The Local Show, a service of Geddes Federal Savings and Loan and Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts. The Local Show, featuring conversations with business owners, employees, and local business leaders about their successes, challenges, and reasons for doing business right here in Central New York. The Local Show, locally produced by Zoe Advertising. Now, here are your hosts, Tom and Steve. Welcome back. Welcome in. You've got the local show. Thank you for spending some time with us. We know you have better things to do, but uh, the fact that you make a, a conscious decision to spend time on the Redidio with us or whatever device you're listening Tom, to. you know, maybe their radio broke. They can't change the station. Yeah, that's right. And um, no, no. they're having leg spasms no. and they can't get out of bed. <laughs> How do we know that they've consciously... Nobody has a radio anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only one with a radio. I, people have radios? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. They, it's devices. Uh, are, it's a device. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, you well. can see us on YouTube as well. So if you're bombing around on the internet, whether it's your telephone, your tablet, or your... Uh, eight track player. Eight track player. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go on YouTube <laughs> and look up Zoe Advertising. And you can cut through all the fun stuff and check it out. Because we have pictures of us. Moving pictures, they call those in your day, Steve. <laughs> with sound. <laughs> yes, moving pictures with sound. Like and subscribe. We're giving away coffee cups. Coffee cups. Uh, yeah, like and subscribe yeah. on there. And you get a... Um, we, we're Maybe an electric car? Picking out, no, not an electric car. A coffee cup. A local show mug. Very, very popular. Very stylish. Yeah, that's yeah. great. I'm holding one up if you're watching. No, no he's not. There's one over there. I got one, see? There we go. Okay, there he's there got he one. Is. Okay, yeah. Yours very is nice. dirty. Look at all the stuff on here. Well, yeah, because it's a real used coffee cup. Okay. There you go. We're going to talk with Natasha Schmidt right now. She's the co-owner of Rubberstone New York with her husband, John. We don't see John anymore. Do you have him locked away? <laughs> yes, <laughs> in the root seller. Yes. <laughs> Do people still have root sellers? Yeah, yeah that's kind of yeah. cool. That's where, the that's radio where they store is. their eight track yeah. player. Yeah. Right? <laughs> they have, where are you originally from? You're Ohio, right? Ohio, yeah. yeah. They have root sellers. We out have there, root sellers, yep. <laughs> yep. Bill Cordors? Yep. <laughs> you were a country girl, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to put on your mud boots to get down to the cellar. And nice. Yeah. Yeah. Rubberstoneny.com. You have lots of pictures on the website. This is Natasha, ladies and gentlemen, and she's been on before. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background and what Rubberstone is so that uh, people can catch up. <coughs> That's catch sure. up, not catch up. Okay. okay. Thank Good. you for the clarification. <laughs> sure. Um, so me personally, I have a background in customer service. So with Rubberstone New York, I do oversee the customer service, the sales, the overall office operations. Um, but what we are is we're a family owned and operated company. Mm -hmm. um, just a small group of people out to cover your ugly concrete, asphalt, wood and paving stones. Um, one granule of rubber at a time. <laughs> sure. Um, what we offer is a port in place safety surface goes right over your existing surface uh, to create a longer lasting, more decorative, usable uh, new new surface. Sure, and let me explain to people uh, even further, I'll unpack that. So we have rubber stone on our walkway that used to be cobblestone, very typical. A lot of mm -hmm. people have cobblestone around here and you can tell because they have weeds and twigs and everything growing up in between the cracks. So it was pretty mutilated uh, and it was old and deteriorated. They came in, covered it with uh, rock and rubber, mm -hmm. beautiful. And it, it even has like a decorative edge. So one color is on the edging and then another color on the, the mm -hmm. main body. So we just had that rain during the week. We had that kind of rain and ice, and it was so slippery out, like you couldn't even grab your car door. It was yeah. all, you know, right? Yeah. And then the asphalt on our driveway, woof, you didn't want to go out on there. Like the dog, I let the dog out, and he slipped and slid. Was and, it uh, fun to watch? It was fun to watch, yeah, i got to yeah. be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> So all that, but I stepped on my rubber stone with no salt, no nothing, and I was able to walk across it 
no slips, no skids, no nothing. Uh, same thing yeah, just too. happened to me and my eight-year-old. So we have rubber on our walkway too. Yes. And when we got to where the driveway meets the rubber walkway, yeah. he goes around to get into the car, and it was like watching one of those Looney Tunes sure, cartoons right. with his little legs just like <laughs> plopping out in front of him, and like he's trying to catch himself. Sure. And, so yeah. I can't say enough about it. It's just you know a wonderful product, and if you're at all uh, you know thinking about. Uh, you know, deteriorating concrete around mm -hmm. the house. Get mm -hmm. out there, get a quote. Well, let me top yours, Tom. Okay. Go okay. Ahead. Oh, this is what it is right okay. now. Yeah, yeah, top each other's yeah, stories. Let's try. <laughs> Put rubber stone on the wall up at camp. Yes. Okay. And the and it was, was it the, a break wall the or concrete, a, uh, right? The wall that's that kind of it's not really a break wall. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the wall that fortifies our, our property there. Mm -hmm. And it's concrete and it was starting to crumble mm -hmm. and yes. other things and and we put rubber stone over there. So that stopped all the it going downhill because yeah. it would have just continued to do that yeah. Yeah. and ultimately we would have had to replace the whole uh, wall mm -hmm. right right and when it rained and uh got frozen i have no idea because we're not at camp in the winter. okay yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> i'm but sure it, it's fine i bet it's just fine, I bet yeah. it's yeah. Just sure it's fine. fine. Yeah. so that also <laughs> speaks to what could go on in a garage mm -hmm. so it's probably a good idea to have it in the garage and you do a lot of garages right yeah garages make up well over 80 percent of our residential business oh gosh I didn't know um it, for a number of different reasons you know it's tolerant to salt exposure right um it can handle being used in a residential setting so in and out with the cars residential uh ohs and spills it can handle yeah i was going to say what if you got oil and and gasoline or whatever yeah so there? it would if it's substantial you would just dab it up with a shop rag mm -hmm. maybe flush it out we do require a once a year pressure wash on all of our materials anyway gotcha. so let's say worst case scenario you're going to have to pressure wash out that area yeah um but typically if you can catch it and just dab it up with shop rags and maybe use like dawn dish soap yeah it's totally fine that's pretty excellent yeah is, but is it different the is the garage different than the basement uh floor is it the same stuff or is it different stuff uh same stuff different concept okay <laughs> <laughs> so it's all it's all rubber i mean we we have other products we can do in your basement you know our sierra stone um is probably more chosen because it's decorative Mm -hmm. But rubber stone is great and it is warmer. Right. Uh, but it's all about, you know, color ratios and, you know, different binders. We use a, a very strong industrial binder to drive on where we're going to use something that's more, you know, UV stable um, for, for higher color applications like a basement or a pool deck. Right. And it, as far as your rubber stone getting a scrape in it or scratch or whatever, should people be concerned about that? You know, you drag a couch, like say it was in the basement, mm -hmm. and you drag a couch over it, and you, would it put a gash in it, like on a wood floor? I mean, you'd have to have that couch loaded down with like a couple mules, <laughs> and maybe a hippo. <laughs> like, you know, okay. it's going to take a lot of weight other than just sliding the couch around that's, that's on cool. both the stone and the rubber. Nice. Um, so yeah. durability is a, a big factor. Oh, for. yeah, yeah, it's huge. So a lot of the basements we do, we'll have to do half and half. So they'll do their, they'll put their pool table and their couch on one side. Mm -hmm. We'll do half the floor. Then they just scoot the items back onto the new floor right. while we do the other half. And that's a big question. Like, ooh, can I scoot this? Right. Like, can we pull this table? Can we pull this couch? Sure. Yeah, there's no issue. No you can do that in the winter. Yeah, right. yeah, basements. You're we, not we gonna do, do the outside, around. but you can do that stuff in the winter. And yeah. how long does it take? About three weeks, four weeks? <laughs> yeah, as long as a bathroom remodel. <laughs> no, um, basements can be done in one day, but like wow. I said, with everybody's belongings down there, it's more common yeah. to do uh, half, and then we wait 72 hours for the floor to fully cure, Yes, and then we come back and do the second half. But most generally, all of our jobs are done in one day. Great. So in, in Italian, we would say that's a couple, two, three days. <laughs> that's, that's what I was going to say. A couple, two, three. All right. That's, that's nice. Are you going to be at the home show this year? And, and when is it? Absolutely. When is it? The home show <laughs> is March, right? Mar it's like, yeah, it's like the March. third weekend. Yeah, it's right around St. Patrick's 16, Day. 17, somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah, right around St. Patrick's Day. But yeah, we got, we'll be there. We got ourselves a nice 
front row aisle view spot. Oh, so yeah, look and you'll for be all the color. Yeah, you'll be displaying. And people can touch it and feel it and, and, and roll and on it. Yeah, I think some people don't know what it is. Yeah, I think they're like they have to I see what know it is. I mean, I still there. get accused of selling cookies. Like, <laughs> yeah. people come like, oh, are you selling cookies? <laughs> That's because of the samples, right? Yeah, the little, the little samples, round the samples. samples. samples little, like, cookies. <laughs> yeah. I liked them because you could throw them. Yes, the uh, samples yeah, figures. You mm. like yeah, them. I like you watch them. All yeah, right, so you and twelve year olds. That's <laughs> yeah. what we're talking. <laughs> That's Natasha Schmidt right there. She's the co-owner of Rubberstone, New York. She does have a husband, honestly, and uh, John is out there running the cruise and stuff. You may not see him much because she keeps him. Whoosh, you That's know, right. out there working. All right. RubberstoneNY.com. RubberstoneNY.com. Natasha, have a great rest of the day. You do the same. Thank you very much. Awesome. Coming up, uh, we're going to be talking with attorney John Murphy, owner of Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts. We got Chris and Andrea DeVita. They're the owners of Salt City Bread. And then Doug Lalone is the owner of the Preserve at 405 Restaurant. He'll be coming up all in hour number two. And hour number two starts soon. Stick around. It's The Local Show on News Radio 570 WSYR, a service of Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts and Geddes Federal Savings and Loan. The Local Show, featuring conversations with business owners, employees, and local business leaders about their successes, challenges, and reasons for doing business right here in Central New York. The Local Show is locally produced by Zoe Advertising. Now, your hosts. Tom and Steve. Welcome back and welcome in. This is our number two of the local show. Get ready for some engaging interviews with attorney John Murphy. He's brought a friend along. It's Marie. Away Marie. Away Marie. Uh, she'll be in there both from it's Safe Harbor. Maria, is it? It's no, Marie. It's, it's Marie. 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 Okay, just to be clear. The song is away, Marie, too. <laughs> Okay, owner of Safe Harbor Wills and Trust right there. And then we're going to talk with Doug Lalone. He's the owner of the Preserve at 405 Restaurant. And then Kim O'Brien from Speed Pro CNY, all in our number two right here on the local show. We're broadcasting from the Zoe Advertising Studio, sponsored by Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts and Geddes Federal Savings and Loan. We're also on YouTube. If you look us up on YouTube, you can see this whole, what I like to call, fiasco uh, on <laughs> YouTube in full technical color remember technicolor Steve? i do i love technicolor mm -hmm. what was the difference between regular color it, and techno color it, it was very saturated it looked like if if anybody was involved in photography it looked like a zebra chrome oh okay. so a zebra yeah, chrome yeah, was so, a print yeah, so made directly knows from that. a slide it's a positive saturated the <laughs> hammer films remember the hammer horror films yeah, absolutely they not. were they were done in 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 zebra color yes and uh zebra chrome and they had that whole technicolor but, yeah look. that big deep like, yeah, where the, the reds were red ruby red lips look really ruby red yeah, yeah that kind Fabulous. Stuff. Well, great. Uh, so just pretend. Uh, <laughs> go, go over there. <laughs> Attorney John Murphy. Yeah, you know. Uh, right now, owner of Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts. Thank you for being here. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, and I'm learning about ancient history. <laughs> ancient. You know, this stuff wasn't around when I was a kid. No, but, but Steve is old enough to no, tell no. us all about it. <laughs> Steve was around when the when original Thomas Wizard film. of Oz yes. was black and white. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. And you brought a friend, and it's uh, Marie. Marie, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you. Uh, say your last name for us. It's Tricarico. Isn't that great? She's it Italian. That's, you brought <laughs> her on just for me. <laughs> just for you. Tom's people. <laughs> we could talk about <laughs> sauce <laughs> and all sorts of good stuff. That's right. You're kind of the uh, right-hand person. Why don't we give a little history of Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts? Uh, I'm going to start. I'm going to do something a little different. We're going to shake it up here. Uh -oh. uh, Marie, when did you join, John? So I started in August of 2013. Okay. And what did you do before that? Many different things. So my, my background is I was a uh, software engineer. I went to school for um, software engineering. Wow. Um, worked at GE. Uh, in Syracuse, and um, then became, uh, let's see, say, I worked at GE, which then became Martin Marietta, which yeah. then became Lockheed Martin. So <laughs> no, three okay. companies sitting at the same desk. Goodness. Um, and then I left when I had my first son to become a stay-at-home mom. Uh -huh. And I was a stay-at-home mom for several years, and then I did some um, work for the YMCA. I, I um, created their first website. Okay, And awesome. I did that, yep. And then I, um, as my kids got older, I... Uh, you know, did things at the Y with them sure. and worked yeah. part-time and stuff and 
worked at uh, helping people with bereavement and doing things like that. And pretty incredible. Uh, at one so, point, were you always good with science and math? Is that, is that it? All through I high guess school? So, or? you know, my dad was into. He had a physics degree, but he was a <laughs> programmer and doing this computer science. So, I guess I sort of followed in his footsteps. That's amazing because you know you don't see uh, enough women in the STEM now. They're starting yes. to do you know STEM, but uh, yeah. in the old days, you didn't see that. Well, I was uh, you know the punch cards. Yeah, so right, that was before yeah. laptops, before all that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. That's fine. Like during Technicolor. Yeah, yeah. right, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, you, so, John, you must have seen something in her skill set. Well, we don't have quite enough time <laughs> to go into our whole history. Um, but yeah. suffice it to say, yeah. I learned a lesson because my initial impression was, what does an engineer bring to a law firm? Right. Okay. And uh, I was mistaken because what Maria's brought and her way of thinking, which is different than many lawyers, is systems processes how do we get done what we get done right. and how do we transfer that into a benefit for our clients and it really has made all the difference in our law firm everything we do has a system everything we do has a process mm. and i don't say this negatively because i used to practice like this most lawyers will tell the clients i'll call you when it's done uh, when yeah. you become a client in ours we will tell you when it's going to be done and we'll map out that schedule with you very nice okay. yeah. so nothing gets lost in the sauce, right? Right. Uh, a lot of law firms, the file you're going to work on, the irate client calls, the judge calls, and suddenly there's things that move to the top with mm -hmm. our systems and processes, which Marie and the team have developed. That doesn't happen. Yeah. Well, now tell us how you went from a general practice attorney to a to uh, focusing on a state law. I failed. <laughs> <laughs> My uh, mother-in-law had come to ask me to help get her mother on Medicaid. Uh, her her father, my wife's grandfather, had just died. The grandmother was in a nursing home, and my mother-in-law came to me and said, we had no idea this was costing this much money. Can you help get mom on Medicaid? I said, sure, how tough can Medicaid be? You know, I mean, it's, right, for, right. for poor people, how tough can it be, how hard can it be? Yeah. And I got into it, and I'm a lawyer, and I thought I could do it, my mother-in-law thought I could do it. I had no idea what I was doing. Things I knew to be true in the real world were not true in Medicaid. So the one I always use is most people know there's an amount of money you can give away every year. Right. Currently it's sixteen thousand dollars to as many different people as you want, and mm -hmm. the IRS doesn't care. But if you applied for Medicaid, they care very much, <laughs> and, and they will withhold a benefit for you. And I had to bow out and really humble myself, not only professionally but personally, right, right? within my family. I can't help. I got to find you somebody else, and. My wife's grandparents had their own businesses. My parents had their own business. I saw a lot of my parents and my family and what was happening with my wife's grandparents. Right, right. And I said, and it was 9-11, you know, all that time. And it was just time for me to make a yeah. choice. I was sick of helping people fight over their kids when, mm. you know, they, that should be their commonality. I did right. a lot of divorce work. So I made the change. I decided I want to help out people protect their home and life savings uh, for their families. And that's what we do. And Marie and our team have really brought that to the next level um, in how we do what we do. And actually, Marie has become a guest expert in a national organization that we're on. They ask her to come in every once in a while and speak to other law firms about process. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. What's that all about? Can you unpack that a little bit? Or? Sure. So it's so basically what this organization is, they're really trying to teach um, attorneys to become entrepreneurs. They're trying to teach them, you know, how, how do you mesh uh, work and life and also, um, and how can you do things more efficiently, more effectively? And so one of the ways is process, right? So many people I know John mentioned when I came in, you know, they were doing a Medicaid application. I'm like, well, how do you do this? And he's like, well, we just do it. And I'm like, ooh, I don't just do stuff. <laughs> I don't know how to just do. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, I do not know how to just do. So that's where we came up with the processes. So um, now um, there's a organization, like he said, and I will go on and help them to do that. And we, we start by doing something really simple, like how do you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? You know, well, you don't just throw the stuff together, right? You got to go, you know, make sure you have the bread and make sure you have all the products yeah, and then take yeah. them out and open the jar and, 
So there's all those different steps that you do to get to the end and how do you get there and stuff. So it's really fun, actually. I love doing it. You know, Steve, you should listen to Marie. <laughs> she, had, <laughs> and, and she, and she had me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> and Tom, if I can, that yes. we just do a Medicaid application mm-hmm. has grown yeah. to the point where we submitted. Now, we weigh our Medicaid applications. They're that so big, huh? We had one that was over 30 pounds. Yep. Wow. We submitted it, and Tammy, who's our director of Medicaid, got an email from that county and said, you should teach other lawyers how to do these applications. No kidding. Yeah. Tammy also just got a call from another county asking her questions on what they need to do in certain situations <laughs> because of how we do what we do. Yep. And in a third county actually got a worker called Tammy. Again, Tammy's the front of this uh, and said, this is my first case. And my supervisor wanted us to wanted me to have your file because of how well you organize things. She thought it would be a good place to start. That's a uh, high that, praise. Wow. It's and, gone and, from and gone from we just do it. Yeah, <laughs> too. And briefly before the break, how does that how does that help the client? You're going to get eligible for Medicaid more quickly. There's not going to be as much back and forth after the application is submitted. Right. And uh, we help preserve hundreds of thousands of dollars for clients when they thought, even though mom or dad might be in a nursing home, that all was lost. Yeah. It's not. We help That's people right. in a nursing home all the time. That's attorney John Murphy right there, owner of Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts. And we're also with Marie, who's his uh, right-hand person over there and uh, develops all the processes. We're going to talk more with them. If you guys wouldn't mind sticking around a little bit. Sure. Okay, great. And uh, we'll put on another pot of coffee and bring them back right here on The Local Show on 570 WSYR. Stick around. Welcome back to The Local Show, a service of Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts and Geddes Federal Savings and Loan. The Local Show, featuring conversations with business owners, employees, and local business leaders about their successes, challenges, and reasons for doing business right here in Central New York. The Local Show, locally produced by Zoe Advertising. Now, here are your hosts, Tom and Steve. Back into it and back at it again. You found The Local Show on your weekend. It's the Golden Nugget of Good Talk Radio right here. And uh, we cover a lot of different topics with a lot of different people around town who have their own businesses or might be working for a local business. It's local, local, local. And uh, we've been talking with attorney John Murphy along with Marie Tricarico, who is the do over at uh, Safe Harbor. <laughs> what is that exactly, Todd? That's the director of operations. Oh, so she's a big yes. shot, okay. Yeah. Yes, she is big. <laughs> Wait a no, second. No, it, 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 it didn't come out right. right. I don't think that's what it is. <laughs> First he called me short, now he called me big. Uh, yeah. First time oh, on, this is my initiation. This is good. Yeah, nice. no, you're, you're, you're doing great. My life was ruled by shorter Italian women, uh, <laughs> matriarchs of our family. That's Isn't that sure. redundant? I <laughs> yeah, I that could be very true. But boy, my uh, grandmother could yield a wooden stick and a ladle. <laughs> and I learned, I learned fast. So we were uh, talking about the processes that make it so easy for people people to do business with Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts. And I know from editing some videos of testimonials that people say that you are very transparent in the way that you uh, describe things and explain things. So they always know where they stand. And even if they're not law experts, which, you know, when people come in, they don't always know what they're doing. Right. They know they need it, but they don't know exactly, right. you know, right. uh, the processes and things. And they say it's just such a, a pleasant experience. So tell us a little bit about your team, Marie. Sure. So usually what will happen is people come to us from one of two ways. Um, either they'll attend a workshop um, and they'll get educated there th- um, with John giving a presentation about two hours, or they'll call us on the phone and we'll talk to them and talk about what their case is, what their situation is, what they're hoping to achieve. Um, so when they first come in, we have a little bit of background about them. We'll come in, we'll talk to them about what they're hoping to accomplish. Um, that's how we'll start out. They'll usually meet with one of our case managers who've been trained by John. Um, we go through everything with them and we'll come up with what our recommendation is as far as how we should go forward. If they decide to go forward with us, then at that point, like John said, we will schedule all of their meetings. Um, there's about four or five different meetings that we have. They'll come in next. At the next meeting, they'll meet with um, one of the attorneys, so either John or Michelle, who will go through, um, again, like what they're expecting to achieve, how we're going to go about doing that, who, who they're going to be leaving their stuff to. Um, then once we do that, the documents will all be drafted. We'll review them internally. 
after we review them, they will then come in and we'll go through each of the documents with them, just explaining. Instead of here's a stack of 16 documents, yeah. we'll explain what each document is, what it does. We'll highlight different things that they have to look at. They'll take th those documents home. They'll review them at home. We'll then have a phone call with them to go over any questions they might have, how many changes they want, may, want to make at that point. Once we do that, then they'll come in for their signing meeting. That's the point where we'll sign all the documents, um, transfer any New York State uh, properties into the trust that they have. Um, then we they will leave. We'll go over some funding information with them. Then we will um, scan everything. They'll come back, and we'll do a delivery. We give everyone their original documents as well as a certified copy, and we'll talk to them about funding their trust. And then they're with us for a year. It's called our CARE program, Continuous mm. Access to Reliable Expertise. And for a year, they'll be able to come in for an appointment, call us, send us an email, whatever. There's no additional charge. And we're there to help them through, make sure the funding is done, make sure, you know, if anything changes their lives. Yeah. We always ask them to call us before you do anything. We'd rather have the call before you do something than call us after to ask if it was the right way to do it. So. Yeah. Sounds like you have a process. So we have a process. <laughs> <laughs> that is incredible. I mean, seriously, that's and the it, process uh, for estate planning. We have sure. a different process for Medicaid, but... Very right. similar. And, and time to transparency, are, unless myself or Michelle have to go to court, mm -hmm. our prices are fixed prices. Right. So there's no okay. surprises. Right, at the end, right. Right. Well, this is really hard to do, so you only need <laughs> right. $500. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. So yeah. they know up front, and we spread the fees out for estate planning through the process. We don't yeah. ask you to write a check up front. We, we don't get paid till our work gets done for that time period. So okay. it, it works well for our clients. Yeah. So, Marie, so Marie, what would you say to someone that said, well, trusts are for rich people? I would say that's 100% not true. What Why? You, because what you have is what you have, right? So um, if I have a home, that's my thing. I feel like when people are trying to save their assets and leave it for their family, it's really what's emotionally important to them, not so much, right? So for me personally, I think of my house. I, my kids grew up in my house. Mm. You know, I, I had children there and everything. So that I want to leave the house. I don't even care about the money part, really, right? I, the house is the house, and that's what I have, and that's what's important to me, so that's what I want to leave. Yeah. So I think, you know, it's what you have is what you have, and what feel, you feel important to you is what you want to leave for people. My sister got all the hummels when my mom passed. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's got the hummels. I got nothing. <laughs> but, did she, but did she keep the boxes? It's, it's no, <laughs> she, there was no boxes. But they were straight from Germany. I, oh I don't know. my god! Now I see if my mother would have uh, done it and you know mapped it all out, That's then right. maybe I would have got some of the hummels. Well, you That's must right. ask a lot of questions in this process. One hundred percent. Yeah. Like who gets the hummels? And I, I'm not even kidding. So, <laughs> yes. right? I mean, yep. right, yep. John? As yeah. detailed as the client wants to be. Yep. So we just did a workshop. We had about forty or fifty people on Monday, and a, a, a woman. Uh, asked me if I could speak to her before the workshop. And I came out and talked to her. She said, you have to let people know. And she thought that she should be able to have the home, even if you know she'd buy her siblings out. But her mom didn't do a plan. Her mom never talked to anybody. There's nothing in writing mm -hmm. about who should get what or who has priorities, right? right? I believe this so sincerely. <clears throat> the biggest gift that you can give to your children oh. is that their relationship will continue after you're gone. And you can ensure that by having detailed plans. Don't leave in doubt what you want to happen. They could be mad at you about your choices, mm -hmm. but you don't want them to be mad at each other. Yeah, right. right. Ambiguity is the worst thing that you can have when you're gone for your family. Yeah. Yeah, wow. we, we tell them that all the time. Like even for a healthcare proxy, we'll say, you know, it's important that you write it down because whether or not you agree with what you're, you're the person to want to be happening, you have agreed to do what they want to be done. And so your siblings won't argue with you because you can say in black and white, this is what right. mom wanted and sure. I'm doing this, you know, or being cremated or whatever. You have right, that right, right. And, and then what happens if people just let it ride and don't do anything? Hmm. In what respect? I mean, if you go to a nursing home, you could lose everything down to $28,133. Um, if you go to court for probate, you didn't go to a nursing home, but you died, you know, the kids are going to share it evenly, but that may not be what you wanted, or they may fight over who's supposed to get what. Mm. Um, you know, the less words in a will, the more room there is for interpretation. Yeah, yeah. And so what do lawyers do best? 
uh, interpret for you, know, you. <laughs> you know, yeah. interpret yeah. on your side yeah. Yeah. yeah so ambiguity we can get really creative if the words are ambiguous so there's probably a lot of people who are listening right now that may have questions in their mind and they should know by now that you guys are very communicative and easy to talk to mm -hmm. uh if they wanted to start a conversation and just ask a couple of questions you gonna charge them five hundred dollars an hour or how's that work <laughs> No, they're going to call and talk to a case manager first thing. Can we help you? And if we think we can, the case managers go through. These are your options. These are the fees. Okay. If mm -hmm. you want to come in, once you come in the door, we do we do collect a fee. Sure. Okay. Yes. Um, when you when you sign up for your plan, that fee goes towards your plan. Sure. So we use it right. as a down payment. Okay. Um, but they could call to just yep. you know kind of yes. say hey this is what we're thinking mm -hmm. and you know we have some questions now does the the do does the uh, <laughs> director of operations answer the phone or is it you got people for that <laughs> we got people <laughs> <laughs> we got great people we got great people yeah we have our receptionist who answers the phone her name is Bridget mm -hmm. um, normally she answers the phone um, and she will get information from you and if um, she'll schedule a, a time that a case manager could call her, the person back so either somebody's available at that point and one of us will talk to them, or if we're not, they'll schedule a time. So they know when we're gonna call back. Oh, all right. That's right, you, you had some things there you wanna talk about. So, yeah, yeah, real so, quick, what do you got? So quickly, uh, we try to do our part to give back to the community. We contribute to Galasano Children's Center, the rescue mission. Mm -hmm. uh, we're raising um, Collect. assistance collecting for the rescue mission the next two months. Uh, they're looking for all kinds of things, toiletries, you know, uh, travel size toiletries, gift cards to Dick Dunkin' Donuts for five hours. If you are so inclined, you can drop by our office at 6702 Buckley Road between uh, 9 and 5, and we have a collection box right there if you'd like to help out people who are really trying to move ahead and get back into society where they could be uh, productive members. So if you want to drop off something to help some people, we're open. If you're not sure what to bring, call our office. Yeah, right near 7th North Street, just right up, uh, up Buckley, right there near 7th North Street. Right. Excellent. That's attorney John Murphy, owner of Safe Harbor Wills and Trust, director of operations, Marie Tricarico. Thank you so much for being here, both of you. Thank you for having us. All Thanks, right. guys. Have a great rest of the day. Thank Coming you. up next, we're going to talk with Kim from Speed Pro. She's an account executive over there. We'll learn all about their business on the local show on 570 WSYR. Welcome back to The Local Show, a service of Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts and Geddes Federal Savings and Loan. The Local Show, featuring conversations with business owners, employees, and local business leaders about their successes, challenges, and reasons for doing business right here in Central New York. The Local Show, locally produced by Zoe Advertising. Now, here are your hosts, Tom and Steve. You're back, folks, and that means we are too. Welcome to The Local Show with Tom and Steve, both from Zoe Advertising and the Zoe Advertising YouTube channel, which is uh, going to be our nest egg, right? Because it's gonna make you millions of dollars I don't on know. YouTube. You know, I don't know that we have <laughs> millions of views, but no. we do have lots of people watch it. Boy, it I, and um, and then so many of the uh, the guests that are on in the business around, they share they it on share their, their pages segment, yeah. and uh, they can see it and people get to know them better. And I think right. that's the key to really business, isn't it? Yeah, right. Uh, knowing you better. That uh, I was just saying, you know, with like Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts, I think a lot of people are apprehensive to talk with lawyers and they think they're going to get charged all this money, right? Right. And, but they're so approachable. Yeah. And, and we paint them in that, that light. Now, and if trust is earned, which it kind of is, you, yes. you, you, over time when you hear somebody, it, you, you get to connect there and it earns right. a little trust because you realize, hey, these are regular people helping regular people. And, and there's a little celebrity to it as well. You know, it's almost like, hey, I hear them all the time. I want to go talk with them. Yeah, in a weird way. But, yeah. but you know, I've seen John hit a golf ball. It's nothing special. Let me tell you. Uh, you know, no. <laughs> but it's like like when I meet uh, when I meet Perry Noun out or right. <laughs> or even Sal Shuga. I oh, go, oh yeah. hey, it's Sal. You yeah. know, I feel. Yeah. And even yeah. though I've known him for years. Have you ever seen Perry not wear a suit? No. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Very, Perry, very For dapper, folks who know, man. Perry does the golf show at 7 in the morning on yes. Saturdays. And uh, he's a lovely fella. He is. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Lovely, very, good, very good golfer. Anyway, it's our pleasure now to bring somebody new onto the show. Her name is Kim O'Brien, and she is an account executive at Speed Pro. Is it Speed Pro CNY or just 
Speed, Speed Pro, Pro Imaging of imaging. CNY. Okay, yeah. gotcha. How are you, Kim? I'm great. How are you? Very nice. Very nice. So, uh, Kim, give us a little bit of your background. Are, are you a native of Syracuse? I sure am. I was born and raised in Syracuse. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah, went to school, went to Henniger, as we uh-huh. discussed a little yeah. bit earlier. I went to Canandaigua for college for a little while and then oh, came okay. back to Syracuse and finished off at OCC. What, what's in Canandaigua? What college is it? Cuca? Or uh, it no? was Community College of the Finger Lakes at oh, the time. Oh, okay. gotcha, yes. yeah. I was a criminal justice major and um yeah as i was telling you a little bit earlier i i had four or five different jobs and got burned out Mm -hmm. and took a receptionist position did you work in criminal justice i didn't i did all kinds of ride time with local police officers right so is um, steve oddly enough (laughs) in the back not for the same reason (laughs) (laughs) i was scared right Yeah, so like I said, I got I got burned out working four jobs and uh-huh. uh, took a receptionist position at a local print company, which is when I met Steve, uh-huh. okay. and uh, quickly went from receptionist to running some printers when people called in sick, and then eventually I was thrown out in a parking lot with half of a <laughs> phone book and said, go sell something. Right. So here I am today. Wow, so you've seen the print business change. Oh, for absolutely, sure. absolutely. What, what makes this Speed Pro, because the name to me is a little deceiving, because when I think of Speed Pro, mm-hmm. you know, I always thought it was like you could go get copies made fast. Right. But right. that's not what you're about. Give us your 30 second elevator speech. Yeah, what, what do you actually do? Yeah, what do you guys do? We are there? a large format printer. We print all kinds of interior and exterior signage, mm-hmm. uh, whether it's large channel letters that go outdoors and are illuminated to a small floor graphic or wall decal, wall right. murals, so, banners. So something like that beautiful Pepsi. Oh, absolutely! Okay. Up yes. on the building, up at Quentin I've seen Stairs. that. Yes, yes. Uh, they did that up there in Cicero. Okay, and um, and uh, now that wasn't large format. What was that? What is that? that? Is, it is large it format. Is large They're format. channel okay. cut letters. Okay, because it has depth. When you say channel cut, explain that. Right. So it's a piece of acrylic that is cut out with a laser cutter or a CNC router. Okay. And okay. then we either apply it to another substrate, or we just go with a straight acrylic or whatever the the substrate mm-hmm. happens to be. Some are illuminated. Some are not. Some are backlit. Some are halo lit. So so that's why it has wow. that 3D look to it. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And how about these like these stickers that we have all over you, here? These huge all, wall any, murals. Anything They're, like that? Yes. Yeah. These are wall decals, wall yeah. murals, yep. uh, cut mm-hmm. vinyl lettering. And, and I know you did stuff for our friends over at Syracuse Hearing Solution, Dr. Anzalone. Yes, we did. What did okay. you do over there? Uh, that was acrylic cut letters as well. Okay. And then we did um, just a couple small signs that go on the doors and plaques and name plaques and stuff like that. Now with this whole, uh, I don't know if you've heard, there was a, this COVID thing. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They're talking about it everywhere. I don't know. Yes. Uh, so has it uh, slowed things down? Like, you know, brick and mortar places. Mm-hmm. Are people ordering less signs, less printing? Or no, Actually, this was my best sales year in my entire career. This was. Wow. Um, I'd love to hear that. Unfortunately, during COVID, I was still one of the newbies at Speed Pro. So I was laid off temporarily along oh, okay. with a couple other people. We, For the big business that we do, we have a very small team of people that we sure. work with. But each one yeah. specializes in something different and they're all cross-trained for what each other does as well. That is excellent to hear that though. Because this is not the first time I've heard that. I've heard that people were like, yeah, you know, the national news paints it like this, but mm-hmm. locally and regionally, right. it's really not. It's not the reality. Do you sell outside of the Syracuse area or is I it mainly here? I sell wherever I can sell. Okay. Yeah, I'm the only salesperson with oh, the great. exception of my boss. He's also out there selling too. He has his accounts and I, we do quite a bit of work for um, some brokers and, mm-hmm. and other resellers. So I have to be careful as to who I can and cannot call on, but I right. will always go to him and ask yeah. him. Now, schools um, too, right? Oh, absolutely. Cornell University, Binghamton University. No kidding. So what would you do at a, at a Cornell or Binghamton? Like, what would you do for them? As far as Cornell goes, I do all kinds of business with um, athletics. So we're, we fin- just finished the lacrosse, men's lacrosse building, and then they went into some construction and some of the graphics were ruined during construction. So now we're replacing some of the graphics there. Um, I do quite a bit of work for men's basketball, for hockey, wrestling, pretty much every sports department there. Wall murals, uh, we do quite a bit of vehicle wraps for, or not vehicle wraps, uh, vehicle lettering and decals, yeah, magnets, yeah. we do wall murals. Yeah, they did the, they did the maple 
Like the that yes. big maple trail, oh, yes, I right. remember that. Twenty-eight yeah. foot of oh yeah, uh, <laughs> huge the that, maple sure. experience yes. with all the graphics, and you go in and you can see maple and how it's made. And all this, yeah. they did that. Right, uh, I forgot Goodness. about that. It was a, it was a year or two ago. That yeah, came that out. was Beautiful. a fun project. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because well, the the deadline on that was pretty quick, a quick yeah. turnaround, and they hadn't even had the inside installed or built yet. Well, correct. Mm-hmm. So we had to hurry up and get the wrap done so that they could take it to the next level. And I think within just what was it, three or four days. It, it was, was it was amazing. At the fair, yeah. So typically, do you work with designers? Like you don't have designers in house. Would you work with like an agency like ours or absolutely other we, designers? So we do have designers on staff. Oh, you do yes. as well. Okay. Um, you know, depending on who the customer is, would determine who mm-hmm. I personally would go to sure. for that work. One of um, our installer actually handles the majority of design work for customers like Cornell University. Okay. A lot of Clinton's Ditch. Um, if it's stuff that sure. we have to tweak or yeah, yeah. do something with that, yeah. but we do have three designers on I'm sorry four designers on staff right um we don't get into creating I mean we can but we don't get into creating logos and branding and stuff yeah, like that yeah, so no. you just do the graphics to deliver the products you have to deliver right yeah okay so if someone had a logo that they wanted to stick on their building mm-hmm. that's up for you right if someone wanted signs mm-hmm. um I know you you were talking we were talking earlier about some interior signs in buildings like right. directions and maps or For the elevator, those are all things that are within your space. Absolutely. But now, if we go back to Cornell University, they supplied us with old photos. I mean, they were black and white photos. Mm. And I sent them all over to my designer, and he was the one who came up with the concepts, whether it was the backgrounds, if it was a graphic, or just something abstract to really add on to the images that they had Mm -hmm. wanted to use for these programs. if people want a sign for their business or for their civic organization or their school uh, and they want it large format, they Mm -hmm. might want something on a big brick wall or if they uh, want something lit that's outside or anything like that, they should call you. And how do they get a hold of you? Uh, They can contact me directly on my cell phone. Go ahead. What's the Uh, the number? 315-256-8925. Let's say that again for people out there. 256 8925. Yeah. Excellent. And um, or email. Yep. Sure. It's it? K O'Brien at speedpro.com. Okay. And speedpro.com Excellent. is the is the website. Yes. 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 So they can see the information there. If they Absolutely. lose it all, like who's that lady we heard? What was her name? And <laughs> they can uh, get some information imaging, and a yeah. quote or whatever yes. they need. Our website is actually mm. more than just a website though. There's a blog on there. There's all kinds nice. of ideas. There's frequently asked questions that will take you to other areas of the website where you can see what other people are doing. So Good. you can get you some know, ideas. Get absolutely. Stoke the absolutely. furnace. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kim. Oh, you're welcome. And thank thanks you. for stopping by. And you have a great rest of the day. Okay? Absolutely. I appreciate you. Excellent. Coming up, we're going to talk with Doug Lalone. He's the owner of the Preserve at 405 Restaurant. Next on the local show on 5. 570 WSYR. Welcome back to The Local Show, a service of Safe Harbor Wills and Trusts and Geddes Federal Savings and Loan. The Local Show, featuring conversations with business owners, employees, and local business leaders about their successes, challenges, and reasons for doing business right here in Central New York. The Local Show, locally produced by Zoe Advertising. Now, here are your hosts, Tom and Steve. Welcome back to The Local Show, ladies and gentlemen. You have found the place to be on the weekend when you have nothing else to do. We take all the uh, misfits. Uh, we're like the <laughs> land of misfit toys. Oh, I <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> that was great. For all of the, the land pe- of misfit <laughs> toys. That was fabulous. For all the people who have no other radio place to go, they come here. They, and they and come back, and then they it. tell their friends <laughs> that they come back. There must be a lot of them, because... The yeah. numbers are good, Tom. Sure, <laughs> a lot thing. of people watching or watching. Yes, on YouTube, but certainly listening. Yeah, absolutely. So, tell me a little bit about um, the Geddes Federal Savings and Loan. Uh, what they have going on now? Well, right now, a lot of people are um, sh- maybe considering, and some are doing it. T- maybe pulling some money out of the market because things have slid a little bit. Yeah, putting it in a guaranteed certificate of deposit. Sure, something a, a little local, more stable. Get a local savings yeah. and loan where they can go in and, and deal with local people. And they're doing that. Um, that's what's happened. Yep, people are borrowing off their houses to, to redo the kitchen or do whatever. But right now, that's it's happening. And if you want to do business local, and who wouldn't, uh, get it at Gettys, Tom. 
Got it. All right. Get it. Got it. Good. It's our pleasure right now to bring on somebody uh, that we have not talked to before on the air, but uh, we talked to his son. It's Doug Lalone, owner of the Preserve at 405. And it's a restaurant, right? Yeah, correct. <laughs> Very nice. Yes. Uh, and it's not uh, a sanctuary, Tom. Yes. <laughs> your your son is Anthony and uh, Anthony owns uh, Gem. The Gem Diner. And, yeah, and, right next door. And you owned it before him. I did. Yeah, we um, owned it for 11 years and uh, he's taken guy. over. Very nice. So yeah. it's a restaurant family. It is. Yeah. What do you talk about at the dinner table? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, uh, what I do, what I yeah. love to do is, is go, hey, Anthony, and watch both of them turn around. Because <laughs> there's yeah. two Anthony's there, right? There are, yeah, my nephew and my son. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. They, uh, wow. yeah, they feed off of each other pretty good over there. <laughs> what a family. Hey, Doug, wh- where are you originally from? Are you a Syracuse native at all? Yeah, I'm a Syracuse kid. I mean, okay. my family uh, uh, was raised right here, and uh, we're third generation. No uh, my mother came over from Germany. Uh, my father and his family for, were from up north. Right. And uh, yeah, we've been here the, the whole time. What high school did you go to? West Genesee. Oh, you're a Genesee yeah. boy. Yeah. All right. And then uh, what got you into the food business? That's a tough business. So we forever were in the car business. We uh, we had a detail shop. We did a lot of work for local dealers. Mm-hmm. And uh, about 20 years ago, we were walking over to a restaurant at Don Elliott's truck stop down the street. Yeah. And uh, about every third week, the restaurant would be closed. And, uh, <laughs> and a That's new good owner. For business. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I said to uh, uh, Tommy, the owner uh, of the building, I mm-hmm. said, why don't you put a good restaurant here? And he said, why don't you put a good restaurant here? <laughs> Great answer. And right. uh, yeah, so uh, my mother in law, uh, Nancy, and her husband, Tony, uh, we all went in and opened Mom and Nancy's. Uh, oh, okay. At the yeah, truck yeah, stop. Yeah, I knew that. And yeah. uh, they had an 18 year run there. And wow. uh, we helped them run it. And uh, I was battling cancer, so I was in and out oh, for a while. Guy. But uh, down the road a little, uh, the Gem Diner had gone under. It yeah, had yeah. fallen on uh, hard times, and uh, the owner just uh, couldn't make it work. And uh, we had an opportunity with uh, our friend Len Montreal, who yeah. purchased the building, and uh, immediately uh, thought of us. And uh, the rest is history. We uh, we wow. expanded it, reopened it, and now my son's taken over, and he's doing better than we ever did. God bless you. He does you a look, great job. You look great. Are you uh, cancer free now? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I good yes, for I you. Am. Yeah, yeah good for you. Yeah, Kicking its you. butt. So where'd you learn to cook? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, I had a great mom that was a great cook. Uh, my grandmother was an amazing cook. My wife and her mother are amazing cooks. Yeah. But uh, I leave the cooking to the pros. I'm kind of right. the uh, I'm kind of the front end <laughs> guy. Uh, sure. Unfortunately, last few weeks with uh, with the labor shortage, uh, I've had to be in the kitchen more than not. No kidding. Yeah. So yeah. the labor shortage affecting you too. It's affecting everybody. You know, Good and uh, it's uh, between inflation, the price increase on food and utilities yeah. and just trying to get good help. Uh, mm-hmm. You do whatever you have to do to so, keep going. So how did the, the gem, which yeah. is a landmark right here Absolutely. across the street from Zoe's right. Studios, yeah. now the Preserve spins off, which is a, it, it's not a diner, it's a higher end yeah. Uh, yeah. classy joint. Yeah. Tell us about that. How'd that happen? So again, Lenny and I, uh, I think we were having coffee one day and they had been talking about uh, renovating the building down there. And I don't know how he talked me into it, but uh, it seemed like a good idea at the time to open another <laughs> when was that? restaurant. That was 2017. Okay, and where where is it located? Tell so everybody. we're 405 Spencer, but Spencer is a little confusing. The yeah, gem is on Spencer, and we're on yeah we're on Spencer. Yeah, here, so. yeah. But what happens is Spencer <clears throat> kind of curves around down near the uh, storage units there near the uh, Aloft Hotel. Okay, and gotcha. uh, comes back up and goes to the north side, and we are right there where it crosses the creek walk. I got you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, we're in an old. Uh, it was at one time a, a rundown construction a facility, and uh-huh. uh, Lenny and his gang uh, made it beautiful. It made yeah. it beautiful. Well, yeah, yeah it's really. Idea. So YouTube listeners, take a look at this. Yes, There's on YouTube you can see delicious this. Delicious pizza. Yes. Hey, radio listeners are going to have to dream of it or go yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. So that's the Greek which we just did today for you guys, oh. and uh, <laughs> we're experimenting. So you're the uh, oh, you're the, uh, the pigs. <laughs> <laughs> the guys. We're not I mean, even the guinea pigs. We're just yeah. the pigs. Yeah. <laughs> and those are our meatballs. Those are some of our garlic parm and marinara deep fried meatballs. Wonderful. And, uh, they're a big seller for us. Yeah. So it's kind of, it, it's uh, a different, you know, obviously a different 
menu sure. than than the gem. Yeah. So what what is the menu? What do you seek to to portray to people? We kind of call it an upscale tavern. Okay, and upscale uh, gotcha. uh, you know our pizza has won best pizza for a couple of years oh, really? in the wow. city. Yeah, People's Choice. So uh, we've done that and. Um, we have amazing burgers. Of course, our pizzas are killer. Uh, corned beef, we just, we sell eight to 10 briskets a day. No kidding. Uh, we cook them all night, come in the morning, break does them Jessica down. do all that? Uh, Jessica does not do any of that. <laughs> Jessica is definitely uh, uh, a front end girl and, uh, and she's, she's awesome. great up there. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. She was my original employee at the Gem Diner. Her and I and my wife started going in there three months before we even thought about building the place. And uh, she started working for me then. And uh, obviously she's still with me. She's uh, one That's of my wonderful. right-hand girls. So do you guys amazing. do catering at all and things like that? Or well, is yeah, it you know, we, we do. We have uh, something going on. When COVID came and we were basically shut down, uh, we needed to find another revenue. And we started doing these family packs. And they consisted of pizzas, our homemade chicken tenders, our... Uh, uh, our chicken riggies, yes. and then we threw in some salads and some of our garlic knots like you've got there. Oh my. And uh, we packaged them, and they were called family packs, and that's what got us through COVID. I was gonna ask and, you what uh, the got And now it's just become a, a staple. Nice. Like, we, we sell out of those every night because we can only book so many every half hour. Yeah. So uh, it's become wow. something that started out of necessity, and it's just uh, become yeah. a you, great You seller. innovated, you we, innovated. We had to, yeah. And, and, yeah, and, no doubt. and when are you open? We are open Tuesday through Saturday. Mm -hmm. We open at noon. We say we close at nine, but uh, we're never out of there before 10, 30, 11 o'clock because you know, we don't kick people out. We just close the yeah. kitchen at nine <clears throat> and uh, people stay until they're ready to go home. You it's have some entertainment there over the uh, warmer months, right? Yeah, we have, uh, sometimes we'll do some two piece outside. Um, okay. We've had uh, we've had some good talent in there. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're not huge, the place is not huge, but uh, it seems like when we do bring in uh, a couple uh, guys, musical acts, we yeah. we find a way to get them in there. Would you like me to come in and sing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. What do you think, Tom? Yeah, that. No, no, no. I don't know if anybody like you to come in. Period. <laughs> uh, singing or not. We're going to use that on comedy night. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Right. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get you down there for that. And, and do you do you have a room big enough if people want to do like a banquet or something? Yeah. So we have a back dining room that uh, you can block off. We don't Good. have a party room per se, but what we found is. Uh, like this weekend, a good friend of mine, his wife is having her baby shower there from noon to three. Mm -hmm. So we'll close that back room down and they can use that. Good. Uh, you know, yeah. in, in hindsight, we should have built it bigger, but uh, hey, we, we did what always, we were Always room for growth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, we'll have you on again. And thank you for the food. That's Great. Doug Lalone right there. He's the owner of The Preserve at 405 Restaurant. I suggest you get on the uh, website, The Preserve at 405.com and see their menu and uh, get out there with a friend or five. <laughs> right. <laughs> Have a great rest of the day. Steve, that's going to wrap up the local show, buddy. Time to go. Time to go. On behalf of Zoe Advertising and Tom and Steve, God bless you and your families. Try and get some vigorous activity every day. And at some point, go out there and uh, help someone who might be struggling with just about anything. Just help out. The local show can be heard every Saturday morning from 11 to 1 and again on Sunday morning from 7 to 9. Listen together with a friend. And until next week, get down to business. Keep doing business locally and tell your friends about the local show right here on 570. WSYR, 106.9 FM, and the iHeartRadio app, along with YouTube at Zoe Advertising 3809.